This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. You had to that well. I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that... What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Bar Stewards Inquiry Weekend Podcast, where we have a cracking uh, weekend of racing, uh, particularly uh, Newcastle, Newmarket, all on the telly box. But with the, the principal race at the Curra, which is the Kidnappers Irish Derby, over 12 furlongs. Um, no geldings allowed in this, um, but there is a filly at the top of the list. And to go through all the action this weekend, joining me is Naps Table Leader. Andy Richmond. Welcome, Andy. <laughs> Good evening. Might not be for much longer. I'm sure no, I'm, sure, no, I'm no. sure the big Q is on my tail somewhere. I, I, absolutely flying is Andy this season. It's good to see. And also joining me as always is my partner in crime, John Lane. Good evening, John. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how excited John is for this weekend's racing. So we'll go we'll get straight on, fellas. <laughs> It's a busy show, and we'll go to our third best bets of the weekend. And I, I'll kick us off, shall I? Uh, we'll get straight into it. We'll go 255 Newcastle, which is the uh, Northumberland uh, Vars, the, the, the consolation for the plate. And I've spotted an extraordinary piece of value in this Tiger Jet at 33 to 1. Double carpet, 33 to 1. <laughs> Brian Ellison, my old trainer. He loves winners at Newcastle. He's not had much runners so far, but he seems to be mob-handed in this. And this horse is totally unexposed over two miles and a trip that he should thrive at. And you only have to watch the final furlong of the Queen Mother Cup, where and you can see the, the terrific late headway he made um, under under Jessica Betty. I, I, 12 furlongs, absolutely no use to him. And remember, he nearly beat O'Ferrius uh, at Suttle in the winter. £11 better off with that horse today. 73 does not sum him up over two miles. I think he has it. very, very good claims. 33 to 1 is ridiculous. Should be 10s tops for me. So if you can take advantage of that by the time recording's finished and uh, you're, you're listening tonight, good luck with that. So uh, that, it's a pricing, Rick. And I think he'll reverse the form with the Ian, Will- Ian Williams train Zealandia that finished in front front of Tiger Jet in the Queen Mother. So one point win, thirty three to one Tiger Jet for me. Andy, we're staying on the uh, Tapita. In fact, I'm going to stay there. I'm actually going to stay on the Tapita for all of it. Jesus, shows you what either gas pits there are on Saturday running, isn't it? <laughs> There's the July course gas pit. I don't want to go near that place. That is ugly track. That is. Uh, and um, and Windsor, God Jesus! Oh, honestly, I might be going out tomorrow afternoon. Right, third best bet, no waffle. Vulcan for uh, for Rafe, uh, Rafe and uh, and Peter Crouch uh, in the finale, the five thirteen. Saw this one run last time out. Ran a very good second to Ziggy last time out. Had run deplorably the time before, but it looked to be on the way back at Haydock. Um, last time out, got beaten three and a half lengths. Don't really think he was in the right place for much of the time, but I did like the way he travelled throughout the race, came away from the, the rest of the field, and the winner had just quickened away from him. I think the winner's probably actually quite well handicapped. Certainly marked him down as one to be interested in then. I think he's around a four to one chance at that, and there's certainly a horse I wanted to back next time out. There is a little bit of fives with um, 888 Sport, but I don't know anyone who can get an account with him. But he's nine to two with uh, Hills and Skybet, and a point on Vulcan at about nine to two will do me for the third best bet. Indeed, yeah, I'll give you nine to two, Andy. I think that's, that's fair enough. Also, I think, I think you get nine to two on the machine, anyhow. Yes, so that's a good start. And also, like, a Vulcan by Free Eagle, of course, a very good all-weather sire. So Vulcan, you know, might might step forward again for coming back to the all-weather. He's been on the all-weather before, but, but might just step forward again uh, on the old sire stats uh, for, for Vulcan. So good stuff, Andy. Cheers. John, your third best? Here's a highly topical talking point, Tim. <laughs> um this is in the 225 on the tapeta. Um And old Glenn Shale has taken a while to come to hand this year, I think. 
Yeah. Look, look very stuffy first time up and still looked as though it'd come on a bit last time. And I think the key to this tomorrow is the fact that there's very, very little pace on in this race. And I think he could get a complete softy under Mrs. Marquand, who could soon be the latest contract jockey ensconced under the Gothic Towers at Clarehaven, <laughs> given the, the current turmoil that prevails in the market with the sardine and the big tall fella and his gimpy son. <laughs> Not according to the Times, they thought it was that Thady was uh, was uh, the tall the tall fellow's wife. Well, yeah, absolutely. Who, who, today. Know, well. who knows what goes off? Who know, they might have an inside scoop on that. Um. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> anyway, uh, so John, so I, I take it, John, one point on the nose at the yes. old, uh, yeah, eleven to two. Yeah, so hope this Mark Juan gets the fractions right. If she doesn't, she'll drop out the back of the telly anyway. So. Oh, we're on, we're on snout. All right, good stuff. So that's that's the first round done with. Andy, I'm going to come to you first of all for your second best, please. Right. Well, you can't you can't have your three without having a shirt horse in, can you? Eh? No. He, he is he is pound for pound the best trainer in the country, bar none. Uh, William Haggis. Uh, I hope he's got his shagging shirt on tomorrow. Uh, and speaks for his jockeys in adversity. Mm. He does, Mr. Yes. Mm. Yeah, Mr. Mar- Mr. Marquand's riding this one, and it's Busala in the 4:38. Um, Ryan Moore was on last time out when he was at uh, Chester. That was the week that he had that stellar week, but he didn't work his magic on Busala in the seven furlong handicap, which started the Friday card. Uh, he was starting from stall five. He actually hit a low of 1.06 in running. Uh, on Busala, who was relatively well placed, but he didn't really get the uh, the run of the race. It took an age for him to get a clear run. Not an uncommon problem around Chester, as we'll probably see tomorrow. By the time that uh, Mr Moore had extricated him from the pocket on the rails, the far more positively Red Mirage had flown and just held on. There's no doubt on this performance that Busala is capable of winning again in Handicap Company. That was just his third try in the sphere. He won on his Handicap debut. I thought it was inter- be interesting to see where he went next, actually. The Royal Hunt Cup was was mooted, as was the Bucket of Palace. He's ducked both of those. Uh, he's now uh, in this 438 at uh, Newcastle, Busala. Hills had priced this up. Uh, 11 to 4 when the first opened. God knows how they came to that price. That really was a rick. I think the best now is 13 to 8 with the knees. Uh, but yeah. not everyone was, uh, not everyone was uh, pricing it up. But uh, certainly Busala, at, uh, if there's a bit of 13 to 8 around, I have full admission, I did actually manage to get a bit of the 11 to 4. But uh, 13 to 8 Busala will do me nicely. Two points on the nose. Tar very much. Home you go the shirt. Love, like it's 13 to 8 with Paddy Power and Betfair. Denise 11 to 8, as we yeah, said. Yeah. Denise is still on trends. I, I don't know where that, I don't know how the 11 to 4 was just a, uh, you know, they, they yeah, took, yeah, they took a punch for me, and that was that, that was that, that was my lot. So, uh, thank you. But I don't know who made that price up because, um, it was never an 11 to 4 chance. No, I can see that being very well bet, Andy. So, two mm. points at 13 to 8. Yeah, Andy's second best, Boo Sala. The 438. Okay, I'm going to come to you, John, next. This is fairly straightforward as well. Um, 255, Newcastle, Wise Eagle, Carson Distance winner, back on his last winning mark, cracking draw, goes Andy, not a lot of pace on what's not to like. No, he does go well here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. L- loves the all weather. Did he. Did, he ran in. He ran again. He ran in a, a, a all weather championships race in April, I believe. Um, ridden by Graham Lovely Hands Lee, that decided yes. to. Uh, His hands are something to behold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, 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 when Graham Lee retires, we might replace Jimmy <laughs> Lindley column with Graham Lee Lovely Hands, Lovely <laughs> Pair of Hands column. Probably very good uh, to hear that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Graham loves a quiet one, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I, I, it was it was it was a very weak ride. I felt um, that day, but yeah. So, uh, John, are you, are you happy with sixteens? Yes, more than happy. Um, I'm going to wanker it though. I'm afraid. Okay, I will give you five places. Lovely. For the sixteen to one, that's with bet three six five Paddy Power. Uh, bet fair. Uh, We've got man, man of the moment, Paul Hannigan up. So yes, it, uh, you're hoping he might carve off the field up. Well, he'll he, he, certainly make sure he gets on the rail, I think. For sure. Yeah, so wise eagle for John. Uh, it, it goes against me there. And, uh, OK, for my two-pointer, I'm going to uh, also go against John with his bet in the uh, in the chip chase. So me and John are just... Bit of, you know, bit of head-to-head here, isn't it? Is yeah. Cross, bit of cross bet? Doubles. <laughs> A few, few head to heads. Well, yeah, cross doubles and dutches um, could be the order of the day. And I'm sorry to be boring, but uh, the shirts, uh, sense of duty, the three year old filly at two to one is value. Um, this should be shorter than two to one. That's with William Hill, Coral, and Labrooks. When you look at the, uh, was it the, oh, I forget, the, was it Cecil Frail, I think, at here? Yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's the race. That's the, the race. Cecil, yeah. And this is this is very this is very good form because this beat Flotus and and Flotus I, I felt had, had, was coming to win the race took it up set, and went past Sense of Duty Sense of Duty got got back up and fought like a lion and went right to the line um, and obviously Flotus has finished third to Perfect Power in the Commonwealth Cup and the third horse Benefit has since beaten Nahar and Edrach. Um, in the Cathedral at Salisbury, getting the weight for age and the Phillies allowance. S- same scenario here for Sense of Duty. And I think this horse will love the stiff six furlongs. I think gets the perfect tour off Glen Shield because they're drawn closely together. Like John says, I, I, I agree. I know that I know we're pointing the obvious out, which first two in the betting, but Glen Shield will bounce out. And I, I just think that's the tour that... that uh, that that is perfect for for fav backers. I love a fav. Um, and the thing is as well, pe- people look at the, the the official ratings and they'll see sense of duty on 101. And I bet you some idiots on the on the morning line tomorrow or so, or some some tipping podcast. I'll, I'll say, well, it's only rated 101, so how can it be this short? Well, it's not going to be rated 101, is it? Because benefits rated 104, floaters is rated 112. It's beaten floaters. It's beaten benefit. So how can it be rated 101? You know, it's so. If, if if you change that number in the racing post from 101 official rating to say probably what it should be rated 109 or something like that or 110, then on, on the Cecil Frail form, then then you know you, you can understand that the price. But I bet you someone says that tomorrow. How, how can it be this price? Only rated 101. So anyway, that's my uh, second best. Uh, of the rounds, so now I'm nah. going to watch the morning line, but I'm going to make a point of watching it now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you someone does. I bet. I bet you. So I, I, it's just it's the obvious thing, isn't it? You pick up the papers, you know, you, you look at it, and you you see Glen Shields rate 112, and there's a few others in mm. there 108, and you know, and 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 they'll say, well, uh, you know, I'll find them before the race. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say, <laughs> well, you know, don't be saying that because we've sussed it. Yeah, we, we we've sussed it. The bastards have sussed it. So so might be some reverse forecast there. Well, I do like Glen Shield, like John says. Only thing is, strong suddenly tomorrow, blowing across them. And yeah, but better... Holly, Holly Marquand is only tiny, so there'll be less wind resistance. <laughs> <laughs> less less bulk, John. Less she, bulk. She, she's only half a foot taller than Frey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Right, we're coming on to our best bets, and this this is this is where you need to you need to get listening because these these are our good ones. Um, we've given you the duff ones. Now here's our good ones. So, John, I'm going to start you off first because we've not started you off first. So I want your three pointer. I think somebody should inform the press about this one because I'm actually going on a kilt horse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to say Simcock for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that. It, it came close, but no, no, it, it's yeah. a kilt horse. And obviously, if I'm back in the kilt, I want a big price. And you don't get many bigger prices than this. This is Golden Flame, 
in the Northumberland Plate at 33.01. Oh, love, love this. Love this. Um, We've got two, two 33s, Berkson. <laughs> love it. The, the thing with this, it just didn't say it's out in the, um, the Ascot Stakes. Simple as that. Uh, the horse has actually impressed me this year. Um, I noted him on seasonal debut, thinking this will bring him on a bit, and sure enough, he ran a ripper of a race when he was just nutted by Valley Forge at Haydock. Yeah. And he was giving Valley Forge four pounds, when he only, only gives Valley Forge two pounds. Here. Valley Forge is 13 to two. Still has questions to ask on answer on temperament for me. Yeah. This, this thing's very honest. Typical kilt horse, you know, gallop out here. Battle. See, see, off, <laughs> see off challenger after challenger. <laughs> you know. um, and as I say, he's only given that one two pound. The difference in price is utterly ridiculous. Connor Beasley's up. Joe's been jettisoned. Mm. I honestly think this horse has races in him off this sort of mark. Uh, I don't think he's a, a typical kilt horse. It's going to be completely in and out either. I think overall, if you take that blip out over two and a half, I think he's got a fairly steady profile. And uh, I, th- I think 33 is well out of line. Indeed. Point now, you make- where, please. You make a very compelling case. Do you want the 33s with five pegs or do you want the 25s with seven pegs? I love the five pegs. Five pegs I'm, for double I'm, carpet. I'm watching finish sixth. <laughs> <laughs> so that's with Bet, Bet Victor and uh, Coral. Uh, mm. It's for John with uh, Golden Flame, 33s. Good case, Brooks, mate. Lab Brooks as well. Yeah. La, sorry, Lee, yes, Lab Brooks. Oh, yeah, that. Each other. yeah, five pegs. Yeah, you're all right there. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So good stuff, John. We've got two thirty-three to one shots tipped on this show. That's what we like. Okay, uh, before we come to Andy last, I'm coming to my best bet, and it's a very strong one. It, <laughs> the only drawback it goes at HQ, and if you look at the first, the first two times, the first two times tonight at HQ are rather worrying I think, for for punters that that enjoy backing horses on good to firm ground. I think the first six furlong race was. Uh, over three seconds slow and the 10 furlong race that's just been run as we record was uh, nearly six seconds slow um, you've of water <laughs> I, th- I think they've I think they've chucked quite a bit on must have uh, been galloping Mishref again then well well yeah I mean this is this is the thing I mean I mean we, we said on the sermon last week that that uh, some some uh, some of Arian's jo- uh, work riders were fuming because the, he spent more time watering the July course than, than he did the water gallop, which was good to firm. Well, there were lumps, uh, the lumps coming off the top again last week. Yeah. I, 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 I hate that. I, I, aesthetically, sorry to butt in, but aesthetically pleasing, although the, the July course is, I think the place is an absolute gas pit. It is. And it, and it's probably the one reason why I'm not, well, I'm, I'm putting both of both both plums in, in a vice here with this, but I'm, I'm, I'm very, very confident. Um, goes in the two or five. It's the Empress Philly steak. Um, and it's, and it's for the sardine to gain revenge on, uh, on, on, and you could, you watch Twitter explode if this wins, um, you know, the sardine blasting clear inside the final furlong. Oh, old, old Johnny G and Thady, they'll, and Slim, they'll have to, they'll have to bunker down after this, this bounce of <laughs> Lazoo. Lazoo of Ralph Beckett. Um, what a bet this is. Um, Mini Tonka was very impressive at Salisbury. There's not a lot to back it up in terms of times or, or necessarily form of that race, but it was visually impressive. Now, the the thing for me about the water here at Newmarket is that she's a very fluent mover, is Mini, Mini Tonka, and they've stuck plenty on. And I think that will count against her. Um, even if it dries up overnight, but they, they, they stick a lot. I won't surprise if he goes and does it again. You know, like after they finish racing tonight, he loves it. Loves the the candles prosser. Anyway, so Mini Tonka has been well bet. That's into favouritism about fifteen to eight, two to one. But let's talk about Lazoo of Rafe Ralph. This filly is 
group class for certain. Absolute certain. There's, there's, there's no doubt about this whatsoever. I can promise you this Phillies group class. I can tell you why, because it's backed up on the clock. A 34.79 last three furlongs at Bath um, was only just slightly slower than Royal Acclaim, the 92 rated three-year-old. Admittedly, Royal Acclaim was waiting for a gap and did it on the bridle. But when you consider at this time of year, they get £34 weight for age. And the 34.79, like I said, was 0.4 faster. Um, that's half a second. That's probably three lengths faster than a three-year-old. This is this is one to take note. Anyone watch this video last time, you will think, how the hell is that one? How has that nailed James Millman? In fact, poor James Millman came on Twitter afterwards and said, how has that... How, <laughs> <laughs> have I got beat there? You know, it's about three and a half clear, and it wasn't stopping. The sectional said that James's horse wasn't stopping. It's just that Rafe Ralphs was flying. Um, this is a serious, serious, serious filly. I, I, I genuinely think she's minimum group three, probably beyond that. I, I, I speak that highly of her. She'll be benefit from six furlongs. Uh, nine to two is available um, at the moment across the board. That's massive. Um, I'd make a favourite. You can you can have your Westerberg and Mini Tonka and and bench him. Um, where with the sardine, Lazoo, three points on the nose, nine to two across the board. Take that because I will be and I'll be having plenty on. That's Lazoo, two or five, new market tomorrow at nine to two. Okay, Andy, coming to you to finish and if, the and If you don't win, you'll be having sardines for tea. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or not, as the case may yeah. be. Right, we're gonna go to the Northumberland plate. Um, because I've got a few bits and pieces there. Um, I'm going to disagree with the fact that low-drawn runners are well-drawn here. I think that's absolute bullshit, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, it's a bit it's a, a bit of a theory like the, the low-drawn runners are well-drawn over the mile and a half at Ascot, which some trainers still think they are when they're actually not and you want to be drawn out wide. And I think since we switched to the Peter here, I think you probably need to be drawn uh, out wide in this. Probably not so much in the in the old consolation race, but certainly in this, because I think they go a little bit too hard on the inside. So I think John, whilst I respect John's uh, su- uh, uh, um, selection, which was, uh, of course, Golden Flame. So let's hope Connor uh, don't go too hard. And the reason why is because I think you need to, when you come into the home straight, I think you need to swing and get over onto this, Far on this near side rail, everything wins up there in the in the straight. I don't think you want to get maroon down the middle. So if Connor's in the lead, John, you better tell him to get over to this stand side rail, because the one I'm going to put up is going to be right behind him, travelling well, and that's Valley Forge. Um, if you look at the draw, since we switched to the Peter, the the one two three four for the higher half have been in the 2017. We had the one two three four five in 2018 from the higher half. Last season, it's even more pronounced with high-drawn horses, drawn one, two, three, and four. In fact, they came out of stalls 15, 19, and 14. So I'm pretty sure you need something in a double-figure field. Fascinating to see True Sham run, because as I put up earlier today, I can only find one horse since 1997 who's run off a higher mark in, in Britain or Ireland in a handicap. That was Decorated Hero, ran off one, two, one in the Tote International in 1998. But if you look at the record overall of horses running off 110 plus in um, handicap since 1997, I think there's 10 winners from about 140 runners. So he has got a really tough, I think he's, I mean, if he wins this, um, he's got a real, you know, he's a really, really, well, he's a good horse, but, you know, this is a, this will be a really top class performance. It's a shame we don't see more horses running handicaps like this because it'd be, it would be fascinating. I give Brzezinski a good chance because his chest of cup third has been really good, but I'm going to go with Valley Forge. Um, I think he's the pick of the four year olds. Four year olds have done well in this since they switched to, to Peter. Um, both York last year and uh, last year and Haydock five weeks ago, he travelled really strongly. Uh, it was probably the last one off the bride in those. Uh, I think if you can just sit and sit and wait here, David Probert, terribly underrated jockey. I still think he's underrated. I think he's very very good. Um, could he be in for the Gosden job? Uh, he could be. Everyone could be in for. Well, would anybody want the Gosden job? Because you could be going under a bus very quickly if you get if you fuck something up. But um, yeah. <laughs> you 
Um, entering, you know, you need to come into this race off the back of a decent run. Most of them, most of them, have, you know, Valley Forge certainly does. I think he'll enjoy this long home straight. Hope Mr. Probert sits, bides his time. Hopefully he gets a good lead in off Johns and Johns holds on for a place at least or, to, or wins because I'll certainly be backing it. But Valley Forge, I think, is the, the pick of these. I'm frightened of the Brian, of the Ellison represented one smooth operator as well. Uh, no, more things than Jimmy White, that. Yeah, it's prob- probably is. Balding, Balding has won, obviously, Balding's won a big stain handicap. He won the Ascot Stakes with a former Melrose winner, Coltrane, and he's got a fine chance of repeating uh, another big stain handicap winner with another Melrose winner in Valley Forge. So I'm going to I'm gonna bottle out a bit here because it is competitive um, and defend my lead. <laughs> and I'm going to take the seven two, pegs. You can 13, have seven two, pegs. 13 to two each way, seven pegs. If that's not in the first seven, I'll be very, very surprised. <laughs> seven pegs there for Rich Mond. Uh, seven Take that. Defend the lead. I've all defensive. Yeah. See. Adam, Nor- Adam Norman's going berserk now. Oh, that's fine. He's well, some pegs he's having the bath, hasn't he, Adam Norman? Can he, can he, when, he can be bothered, <laughs> when he can be bothered to turn up when he's not pissing around in the paddock somewhere. Some, you know. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Norman will be back when, when, he, when he's finished fooling around in the paddock. I thought, I thought he only liked it. He gives it a big end about being a national hunt man and suddenly he's gone flat. He's gone over to the dark side. Yes. Five point yeah. 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 He's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's sort of making a mess of that as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, kid, so, you know, I mean, um, so there we go. So we've got some some head to heads, cross doubles, reverse forecasts. Play your exotics again. Yes, thirteen to two for Andy. So Valley Forge. So two pronged again. A lot of cross match here. On, on on our selections this week, which is rather odd, but but nevertheless, uh, it's yeah. You must go with your own reasoning, listeners, and decide which you like the best um, of, of of our best bets. Okay, we'll come to uh, the tele television uh, races for the weekend, and there's there's plenty to go at, uh, and we'll obviously cover the Irish Derby to finish with, but we'll start. Um, in the 150 race, uh, the ITV race at Newcastle, which is Strike Red is heading the market at nine to two for Richard Fahey. Any view here, chaps? I think it's I think he's the right flavour, isn't he? Strike Red. That fourth at Hamilton is particularly strong form. The, the fifth and the sixth one next time out. The sixth is Tipperary Tiger, who reopposes. I think it's a yeah, I, I like a couple of reasonable prices in this, and I do think that you do. I, I do think you need to be drawn high on this straight course at Newcastle. It's undoubtedly quicker near the stands. Well, they seem to get a bit marooned out in the centre. Uh, I always like them to be this side. And the, the two that I quite like at reasonable prices, one is Sound Reason, who won over five last time at Haydock. He's not tried six much, and I think he's – and he tried it once before – but he's an infinitely better horse now. And the other one I'm trying to forgive his last run because it was particularly poor is Retia. I've always thought we'd had a decent sprint handicap in him. He's actually being backed quite heavily this evening. He's already down to about six to one on the machine. So obviously somebody else is thinking like I am. But I was going to have a couple of pokes in this and not and not back strike red. But um, I might be foiled now by re- the price on Retia going. But Retia and Sound Reason will be a couple of pokes against the field uh, in the what well, is a very tricky 150. Yeah, again, again, I'd, I'd say to punters, look, you know, you, you've got the the strong cross breeze tomorrow, mm. which is not in the faces, but having spoke to several jockeys that have rode Newcastle, um, including Frog Eyes and a few others, um, <laughs> you know, like, it, <laughs> I don't know what use that is. But anyway, um, generally, when it, when the wind's going across woods, that's when the, the jockeys feel the bias is towards the stand side because obviously... Mm. The ones, the lower numbers, are getting the full shillelagh like, of the, of the breeze, yeah. and and the ones on the stand side are completely sheltered. So so and 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 while it's not in your face, if if something you know, it's, it's like you, if something's blowing into your side, it, mm. it's not. It's, it's, you know, if, if it loses you a couple of lengths or, or a length or something in a race, it, it could cost you. But so so I was with you, Andy Retia. I, I felt was uh, well drawn, but. I would like to see a lot of lot more pace than I'm seeing to be confident. And and now the price has collapsed from 12 yeah. into 15 to two. Yeah. I'm now gin and painting it and letting the dog in. 
<laughs> I think I'll be doing this. I might just have a little dabble on sound. Re if I can get a double figure price on the machine on sound reason, I may well just play that. But um, it yeah. is uh, competitive to say the least. Yeah, John, anything to take your eye here? Um, I thought being proud and kind of you probably wouldn't sit as far back as some reason in the tier. And with a what can, could be a bit of a lack of pace on, I, I don't know whether being completely held up is going to be the, the thing in this. No. Uh, I think you might need to sit a bit nearer. Uh, kind of you 20 to 1. I'd maybe have a sporting poke on that, but I'm not, uh, I'm not gagging for a bit. No. Okay, 225, the chip chase. Uh, me and John are sort of head to head with the uh, sense of duty and Glenn Shield. Uh, to be honest, I, I like both. Um, uh, Andy, your thoughts here? Yeah, I, I sort of, you actually sort of mirrored my thoughts, really. Sense of duty is very much the, you know, the right favourite, um, even given the, the ratings, which you correctly point out. The run in the Cecil Frail has been franked all over the place. The third, the third one uh, next time out, benefit the seventh, Gale Force Mile one. Obviously, Floatus ran a very good third in the Commonwealth Cup, uh, which Sense of Duty actually had an entry for. Um, so the shirt has obviously come here. I suppose the one small question mark is the all weather. Um, I quite like the draw. Glenn Shields should set the pace and say if Mrs. Marquand gets the factions right. Uh, like John, I, I, I thought that that one had a, you know, had a particularly good chance. I might just throw a couple of quid. Um, and this might be spectacularly stupid at Bielsa, who I thought was completely overpriced. But that might just be me trying to um, go back in after I got a, obtained a very good price on him last week, pre the draw, pre the uh, the draw bias rearing its head at Royal Ascot, and then then withdrawing him, <laughs> which was a bit yeah in the bum. I, <laughs> but, but, yeah. Uh, I can't. Can't knock anyone supporting Bielsa at that point. No, I, I mean, if, if the you know the, the the next two behind Sense of Duty in the market, Spy Catcher and Ebo River, I, I just you know two and three, they do or they're drawn three and two. I just not keen on that. And Glenn Shield, as John has correctly pointed out, you know I, if it gets loose on the lead, there ain't an awful lot of pace in this, and could you know could could whiz away from these. Um, drop, it's actually a bit of a small dropping grade, isn't it? So uh, I wouldn't be going. I wouldn't be going mad, but you know, I, I think you could probably, you could actually probably try and trade Glenn Shill because he, he could get a lead and then have a cover bet on sense of duty. Um, that's Mrs. where I'd be. Mrs. Mrs. Marquand auditioning for the top job. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, she'll so be. Think, will, will she be, if she goes and rides there? Could we call her the anchovy instead of the sardine? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Good show, absolutely. I like that. Yeah, she might also kick Mister Marquand in the nuts if if he chins her in the, in the, in the, in the final yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's the, the Marquand forecast here. So. Yeah, it'll be it'll be on the sofa for you, Tom, tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> 3.30 then, the Northumberland plate. Um, have you missed uh, the vase now? You've missed the vase. Have I missed the vase? You missed the vase. You missed the vase. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, I was just on that, actually. I was I was literally, I clicked on it, and then I, I you know, as you, as you go on to the next row. So anyway. Uh, well, you two, so have had, and, you two have had a go. I, I hope the, the fact that, I hope the draw doesn't knack a wise eagle, because I, I, I just fancy a bit of our draw. I didn't really have any strong fancy in this. Um Evaluation, I'd, I'd quite like to see win because I think the Keith Dalgleish has done a really good job with him. Um, I suppose the one who could come back to a bit of form is uh, Jeremiah, uh, who ran appallingly behind ev um, evaluation last time out. I just couldn't find anything, so I'll probably follow you two in and have a have a little punt on Wise Eagle and Tiger Jet at the uh, at the prices. But it wasn't a race that really that really appealed. I was hunting around amongst the, the higher draws, but there wasn't anything that I particularly yeah. fancied there. And Zealandia, who was well fancied for this, is now a non-runner, gents. If it had been a bit more oh. like pace on, I was, I was quite keen to have a look at Smart Champion, but I don't think there's anything like enough pace on for him. He's guaranteed to be last passing the post the first time. Right? It's a simp course, is it? Is it a simp if, course? You, if you can get a bet on that, who's <laughs> going to be last passing the post first time? You'd absolutely have your bollocks on there, wouldn't you, from that draw? Thrasher <laughs> Morris, Morris is just going to take an almighty 
talking at the end of the air. Yeah, uh, we know that. Right, sure. Right, just let, let, right. You know, like Billy Bunters, right? They'll be thinking like evaluation, like four ones. Uh, mm. Keith Dalgleish, Callum Rodriguez, great record, a track, etc. Um, you know, all looks good. But when Sir Michael Stout had it, um, this horse really, uh, it was sort of kept mostly to the all weather, and that's the that's the bit I don't get because as this horse just improved for more. Turf turf racing has it just improved with age because obviously the dam is estimate. Or and, and John, what is the fucking queen doing? Letting one go for 30 bags that's now, uh, you know, there's, there's one four on the Rodneys and he's uh five to one for, for a Northumberland vase. You know, my opinion of Warren, yes, <laughs> um, absolutely. I, I mean, yeah, go on, John. I'm, I'm not convinced that estimate. Throws likeable stock. I don't know that she's won far on the spin and all the rest of it, but um, it's it's served me well over the years to avoid anything out of any of the Queen's mares as, as often as often as I can, and uh, I don't feel compelled to ever bet on that in any way, shape, or form. If it wasn't well, if it wasn't your if it wasn't either of your two winning, the one I'd like to see win is Catbird C. Oh, Gilbert, Mr. Mm. Dan ah. Gilbert, yeah, yeah. Friend of the show. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I love Dan. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see. Yeah, yeah. I, love, I, I, I love, I, I love the colours, and B, B, Dan is a very likable fellow as well. And I think Catbird Seat's actually got a bit of a chance with Mrs. Mark Wand on board. So I might just have a poke at those three: Wise Eagle, Catbird Seat, and Tiger Jet. Three pokes, three long price pokes. No, fuck Dan, fuck him. Um, Tiger Jet, bang. Um, <laughs> Fuck him. Use it as a pacemaker. Dan, 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 if you're listening, here, aren't we, eh? Dan, if you're listening, um, you know, like I've talked to Coos Racing Club today. You should use one of yours up as a big pacemaker. Set a lovely pace up. And uh, we'll all we'll all be we'll all be on the Tiger Jet Express. But anyway, that's if he's not listening, uh, which he won't be. So now nah, now nah, I got ahead of myself. So we'll come on to the north. He'll be in the bath, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> Drowning last himself. Last night, Friday night, for our ways. Yeah, Norman, Norman, Norman. Saying that, didn't Norman do each way one of his last bets when he won? Sure, I think he did. Mm. I think. Yeah, he, I think sneaked, I, he sneaked one in because Andy wasn't on. Yeah, he's I, a think I, I think I monitored that. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, he, he's he, yeah, he's, he's a CU next Tuesday, isn't he? Yeah. Um, right, uh, Rajinsky <laughs> thirteen to two then for the Northumberland plate, and Andy's obviously. Um, and, and John have, have made some some great cases here, so I'll just chuck one in just just for, uh, just just for sport really. Bandinelli, I felt could just be like ignored. I, I felt this horse would would really progress because he's he's quite lazy and he keeps a lot for himself. And I just think he just might be better on the all weather, and that's 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 the reason. And I thought he shouldn't be ruled out at that price. I, I, think, I think this can run well, Lee. Um, I, I have a feeling that this supportive surface is probably what this house wants. I think it brings rain in summer. Yeah. So it might just come back on the old weather because he has got he's decent form. Um, and I ju- I ju- I've always felt when he when he wins his races, he idles, and I've always like I like that. Price, you, you, you have to have a lot of faith backing him after his last two starts, but. He might be just one to consider if you think he'd fancy one at a price. Uh, Bandinelli, I thought. For me, okay, we'll move to <laughs> Newmarket. Come on, lads, oh, you love you? Newmarket. You you love the HQ. You love this overwater. I so like the other. I like the other course. Just run it there. <laughs> <laughs> what was the thing about the July course then? Do you think? The Cundle. I just. It just, I don't know, there's never any, there's one minute they're winning one side of the, I mean, look at the meeting we were talking about, what was it, last week? I mean, they must yeah. have explored every blade of grass on it. Yeah, there's, I mean, John's saying there's no racing line. There's no, like, there's no racing line, there's no, uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it. And uh, they go all over, one minute the stand side's best, next minute the far side is, next minute they're winning up the middle, then the front then the front runners have a go one meet, the next minute everything needs to be held up and the and you know the the pace the, the pace setters are getting 
eaten eaten alive. I just, I yeah. Know, just, I mean, just turn no, no. turn the place into a giant Pims bar and do the racing over on the Roly Mile. <laughs> there you go. Spawn on the. I used to love the Gavai you know. I did. Yeah. Back in the day, I, I, and I when Owington won the July Cup, I won the most confident bets of my life, and I, I wouldn't dream of getting anything like that level of bet now on that Correct. in a July Cup or anything. And honestly, the the nature of the track or some, you, you know, it never entered my head that day that anything might go wrong track related. And now, every bet that I have there, I'm thinking, oh God. What could happen there? I, I know what you mean. There's been times when, like, you set you set your stall out for some bets on anything. I, I've got two or three here, and then like like Andy's pointed out, you it could be they could be stands rail, massive stands rail bias, could be far rail bias, um, well, could be pace so bias. Kettle the bloody place, haven't they? Yeah, well, whatever it is, it's it's not an easy place to bet winners. I don't think. I, I think you always have to watch a couple and just just see where they're coming, where they're heading. Because the thing is, the jocks the jocks are habitual. So if if they head down the middle, that's where they'll probably stay. If if they go stands rail, then you know they're going to keep stands rail, and then you're going to get trouble in running, and that's when it suits front end because horses can't get gaps and stuff like. That. It just seems, yeah, like you say. Well, the, the horse, the horse we were talking about before, I think before we started recording, um, Lee was the um, was Devast who'd run second to yeah. Harry three at, and and you watched the ride, and I'm not criticising the ride at all. Uh, yesterday, just didn't know where to go. Had about yeah. four different positions on the track. I'm about a perfectly good race. I'm not having a go at the ride at all. Young lad rode him, Harry Davis. I think he's incredibly good, but he was just. It's just like it just tried about three different different positions, and I'm like, I just I just do not know where they want to race there. I don't, I, you know, yeah, I don't. <clears throat> just don't like just don't like the place. It's like Windsor, don't like there either. So, <clears throat> okay, so two or five then. Did did your did you chaps have any opinion on this, or did you get no, I, I, I hope yours wins. Um, I mean, it's an it's a difficult race because eight of the eleven are last time out winners. The Hannans have got yeah. a good record in the race. They won it last year with System. The old man won it with a couple um way back when and they I say the juniors won it twice uh the buoy pair i quite like although their their form hasn't really been backed up has it apart from malriskia's um debut second which is obviously a second to the queen mary winner uh yeah. drama dramatized i, I mean I, I must admit i do second my sort of second favorite trainer on the flat at the moment george buoy i think he's i think he's very good i think he's very, and he does, he does well with horses who um, another th- little thing to watch horses backing up does very well gets horses running you know sequences up i think he's a really good trainer i think he's going to be top of the top this lad and so i think he's two have got a chance in it but i would I'd say i hope your lee i hope yours wins but i will not be playing in the race no fair play john I, I like I like yours. I, I think yeah. yours is uh, the potential horse in the race. Yeah. You know, um, I'd be a bit worried on the weather forecast if we get one of these thunderstorms that's supposed to be coming in, because uh, she does seem quite clean action. Does it suggested to me that she wasn't possibly a fast ground type. Well, that would apply to the fav as well, Johnny. What's your yeah. fav if you chance tonight? That's it. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd just worry about yours if, if it rained on top of this water muck. Yeah. I, I think the loose on top stuff, I think she'll cut through its hand. But I think if, if they get a proper piss down and it, it, they, they start getting in a bit deeper, I think there might be a problem. Cause, yeah, good stuff. Okay, we'll move on to the 240. Which is the uh, House of Cavani menswear? Fred Ar Fred Archer stakes. Um, it's Fred your clothes at the House of Cavani then. <laughs> House of Cavani, uh, the Jeffrey Archer stakes, John. Uh, over twelve furlongs. Rebels Romance hasn't been on turf ever and heads the market. Fascinating, that, isn't it? To Dubai, I mean, you'd expect it to cope, wouldn't you? Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, look, the, these chaps are. I, I just wonder why they've never bothered 
trying it on turf. It just well, seems very odd. Well, that was that one, Jules, there in his comments. He said they ran him for a race car gallop. Unfortunately, it was a chance. No, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming they've just let him loose them like a like horse when uh, Gosden's worked mischief or something like that, you know. Um, but yeah, he said he said he had a race car gallop, and you would you would assume that they're quite pleased with what they saw with him being pulling at the head of the market. Yeah, drifting there, putting it twos now threes. Only yeah. views. I mean, there's not a lot wrong with Camari, is there in this sort of grade? You think? Hmm. Um, I mean, there's none of them have massive appeal, do they? I mean, for like a listed race, when you look at the farm figures, the last six races, what the fuck is Jesus? What is there about far, far ones there? Or, you know, Stowell never wins. Universal Order needs a fucking miracle because it's coming from tailed off last every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, he did, did win it. He did win it in 2020, John. Admitted, no. Admittedly, he did try. He did trade a lot bigger in running, and I think if if you're gonna if you, I, got I, gonna, yeah, if you are gonna back Universal yeah, order tomorrow, do not be backing him at around three to one. You want to be having a punt in running at him because that's what happened last time out. And simcox has got a good record in this race. He won well, it in twenty twenty. He won it in fourteen and sixteen as well. So that, he ran well last time behind contact, I suppose. Uh, you know, yeah, he just that was thrilled win only, mate. Well, he's always he's always <laughs> slow away. You just want to have a punt. You just, you've got to have, you've got to have a punt in running. There's no way you can back it at three to one prior prior to the race because it, it, that is a daft price. You won't get shorter when the gates open, will he? No, exactly. So, so you know. Yep. So, so that's it. That's on, the we're... Plus, on the plus side, Spencer's in Ireland. Well, that, that is that is yeah, because that is the, yeah, that is a positive. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, a, it's a rotten, stinking effort of a race, though. It's, it's, it's not. Be, it's yeah. not a race you'd really want to. You'd really want to play in, is it? Nah, I mean anybody that's wanting a tip in that, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. That's that's how I felt as well. Um, so it comes to the three fifteen, which is the uh, the the house of Cavani. I, I want to know what this house of Cavani is. It sounds sounds Edison Cavani. I don't think they're no far XL. They're no good to us. No, no. we need four XL in house of Cavani. <laughs> you know, like big shirts and big big trousers. <laughs> Just throw us yeah. out. Big <laughs> you outgrown Giacomo yeah. then. Well, he's got it in there. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, this is what you do. You you eat, you drink, and you know. The, What's uh, that? With the fucking hippo on my logo. <laughs> <laughs> this could be it, yeah. So, oh, so no, it's house, a bad rain over here, don't they? It's terrible as well. Like like all these fashion brands, they'll say double XL, and then and then you know you you, you get you get them in, and it's like you order them, and it's like no nah, no, nah, it's like large, just terrible. Because they're all made abroad and it's smaller sizes. It is. They've been in China. Like yeah. Chinese <laughs> Chinese triple XL is like our large. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's our, if I bought stuff made in the UK, honestly, I'd be on a fucking medium. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, what I, that's what I tell myself. I believe that if you said America. But anyway, uh, 315. The uh, only yeah. thing that fits me properly is my socks. <laughs> Who's been there? Belts and extenders, yeah. seatbelt extenders on planes, things like. That. Anyway, <laughs> so we, we we go to Criterion. Yeah, come on, like Criterion. This is this used to be sponsored by Van Geest. Remember the Van Geest, mm. Van Geest Criterion stakes. Uh, it's reminiscing there. I, I love old sponsors. Who uh, Van Geest? Is he? Edgerson? I don't know. <laughs> 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 you can just see that, can't you? Like, like Chelsea Knightsbridge, um, you know, Van Geest. You know, <laughs> he, he, he's the one that like cuts them patterns into bloggers' hair just above his ears, isn't he? Cuts <laughs> them out with the clippers. <laughs> And bloggers on with his selfie sticks in there. Look at this. Who's going to pay bloggers now? The bet ball's gone tits up. 
Well, have to so they've withdrawn. Well, well okay. yes, one having you down, it, blog will be open to offers. Yeah, Stalin- Van, Van Geest will be sponsoring his bet. Mm. <laughs> Van Geest Van, Van and Stallion. He'll be back, will Stallion now? Might be back yeah. on scene. Well, you could do with a free haircut, couldn't you? <laughs> from Van Geest. We're, we're assuming Van Geest and Barbie, you know. I mean, he could, he could be anything, couldn't he? Yeah, I'm gone. Uh, Van Geest, the hairdresser. Uh, <laughs> so can, please help me out here. It's just some, some Ray Major 9 to 4 favourite. Um, what Nobody I'm, wants that to win. <laughs> <laughs> the the Doyle book. <laughs> For John and Slim, Andy, your your opinion on this race? Well, I suppose I mean it, it, it wasn't the greatest ride. I don't know. It didn't get the greatest track position last time out. It certainly didn't get the run of the race at Haydock. It's got to turn the form round with Lane Crash and Pogo, who were second and first respectively at Haydock last time out when they all met. And the betting very much suggests that they will. Again, it's not a race I'd be particularly confident in. They're all fairly seven. Uh, they're all seven furlong specialists in this. Some Ray major, I suppose. But you know, it's it got a reasonable, got a reasonable chance. But three point one, I wouldn't want to be back in it. But where do where do you go? I suppose if you saw the track favouring front runners, then Pogo could get a, a, a soft lead here and yes. could lead it out. That that would be the one. So you've got. You've got three or four, well, you've got four races before that. If it's favouring front runners, then I would dive on the Pogo because Sunray, Sunray Major and Lane Cash are not going to not going to be making it. In fact, that's what stitched Sunray Major up last time out was his um, lack of pace, but just a poor track position at Haydock last time out when Pogo got the run of the race. And I suppose you could say, well, you know, rate it if you if you look at that if you look at that race. And you think, well, Pogo was advantage, but 7.4 playing 3.1 and 3.65 at the moment. Pogo's probably where the value is if if the track is favouring those who like to go on from the front. I think you'd probably trade a bit shorter in running if that's your if that's your game. But again, another rather unap- well, the triumvirate at Hader, at uh, sorry, at Newmarket on the telly are uh, unappealing contests. Yeah, I thought some Ray Major had a tough trip at Adop, but I think yeah. he's he, he's messing around. I thought Langquash, uh, that's why they've gone for the pieces on some Ray Major. Langquash uh, travels like the dream, you know, absolutely swings away on the bridle and then does doesn't do much off it. Um, it's one of those that if if you canter in a furlong out, you'll probably scream and saying bench him, bench him a furlong <laughs> out when it won't go past, but. I think that's Langquash. I, th- I think he gets there and just a little bit soft for me. John, thoughts? The Tory will go ballistic if Sunray Major wins. He'll be on the phone to Thady saying, Mamma mia, you put on the cheek of pieces on. I have to do it all on my own. <laughs> uh, you know, just get a camera on him if that wins. It will be a telly coming through the Wayne Room window. <laughs> Right, we've done with the our UK domestic action, and we go on to the uh, uh, the Kidnappers Derby, which is uh, you know <laughs> West Westover and Tuesday um, are disputing the market. I would like to hear both your thoughts on this race. I'm going to start with you, John, on your thoughts on the Irish Derby. I'm a bit gutted about this race. Why? Sergeant Wilson's running the wrong one. I mean, it's not his fault. <laughs> um, yes. I, was hoping, I was hoping Sir Robert Parker had um, only got a man, a niggle, that kept him out of Epsom and uh, was going to go to the Curra as an unconsidered 25 to 1 shot. Unfortunately, we're stuck with our Lionel, who probably wants a bit of dig. So I think. I'm going to have to just hope for the best with Lionel held up in a small field with not much pace on. Thank you and good night, Lionel. Um, we're going to make plenty of use of Westover because he's a ledger type and um, <laughs> that ought to do the trick, really, I think. Um, I don't think Tuesday will beat him over 12. 
Oh, good. Uh, uh, inter- inter- interesting. So, so di- what, right. So, the question to both of you then. So, like, di- is the Phillies better than the Colts? Are the Colts better than the Phillies over a mile and a half? The three year olds. I think the Colts are better than the Phillies myself. I'll go, yeah. the, I'll go the other way. I think interesting. I think the, 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 the I think the Oaks is a deeper race than the Derby. <laughs> Just, well, we, what take out Desert Crown? Are there any other proper Group One horses in there? Could be Westover, of course. Here's here's a, a little sort of angle for you. Why are they running? Tuesday, they're running Tuesday in this because obviously Odin O'Brien ain't got many high class three year old colts this year. And he thinks this is going to give him the best chance of what his 15th Irish derby uh, with a Philly, yeah. which he's done before. The Tuesday is actually only, she's only, he was only she only turned three on Oaks Day. So it was a very late foal. The O'Brien Phillies traditionally are a pretty tough bunch. Do you think that was her fourth run in a classic in less than th- two months? The Epsom form has been given a boost with Nashville winning the pre-Didian on Sunday with the blogger yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and are they just are they going to go the Tagruda and Enable route and try and win the King George with it with a Phillies age and Phillies allowance? If you think that the ten to one, of the Ascot showpiece might be worth having a bit of a dabble at. Mm, interesting, Andy. I mean, well, what, yeah. else, what else has he got for the? What else is he going to have? Broom. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What else is he going to run in that? So, and if they run it here to give them themselves a bit more time between the, in the, you know, a bit more time between the a, they could run her, but well, they could still run her in the Irish Oaks, of course. Well, they run in her here to give her a bit, a bit more time. So I think it's an it's an interesting conundrum uh, between the two. Um, like John, I wish Lionel, well, I wish Sergeant Wilson was running the other one. Obviously, he can't because the horse got injured. Um, I think P- Piz Vadil will run better. The interesting one is Han- Hannibal Barker, who ran pretty well last year in the Futurity to be finished fourth. I mean, I changed hands for half a million guineas after that. Impressive enough when one is sole starting Ireland. Would he win the Gallin Yule Stakes? Just he's, no, a, no. He's, a, he's, a, he's an he's an he's an interesting one for me in it. But it is a it is a fascinating it is a fascinating battle. But um, I think Tuesdays just I, I might just have a little poke at the long long range prices because she wouldn't have won this she wouldn't be she ain't going to be ten to one because she don't win it I could have done me cash but um, that's what's uh, that's that's betting isn't it bet, respons- bet responsibly folks that's all you need to do I, I I think that's a very good angle Andy I really do I think that's a really good point I that that could could well be that I think if if they won this I think then the King George is on the agenda I, I, I gen yeah I genuinely do um, because they, they'll they'll see well if they beat Westover um, if if Desert Crown were to run in the King George well why couldn't they beat that as well you know that that's what they might they might feel I th- I think there's a there's mileage in that so that's, that's a good point from Andy. Um, I'm yeah, I think, I think yeah, even if she wins that tomorrow, I think the King Yard will kill her. You think? Yeah. Um, yeah. You'd probably have the last year's Derby winner coming back. I could see him running pacemakers to try and run the finish out of Desert Trail, and I think it could be a brutal race this year, the King Yard. 10 to 1, obviously, if you can get it down, she turns up. You're not, she's not going to be 10s on the day. No. So I understand the angle, but. I, I, I couldn't have run my mind for that. The, the way the King George looks like framing up at the minute. Yeah, interesting. No, interesting points there from Andy and John. Um, I'm in Tuesday's camp, I think, t- uh, tomorrow. I think she probably just has the edge on Westover, just mainly on tactical pace. Um, Westover, people cry that he was very unlucky in the derby, and there were lots of people saying that he was he, he would have beaten Desert Crown, which is, I think, it's bullshit. Um, you, you have you have to get in the position um, to, to to you know to be called unlucky. And Wester was never able to get into position because he didn't the pit. To see what sort of ride he gets. From yeah, yeah, I think we'll go forward, won't we? Yeah, I think, I, yeah. Yeah. I think they'd have to do. Yeah, I think they'd have to do. But then, yeah, I, I, look, I could be wrong, but I, I, do, I do think I do think Tuesday with the three pounds um, as the slight edge. Um, but it's a good race. It's a good match. I think. 
It's, it's a bit, the, the race is a bit deeper than the betting suggests, isn't it? Because you've got those two at the top of the market. And then with looking at the Betfair market, you've got all the others in double figure prices. But I think there's a bit more, there's a little bit more depth in it than that. I wouldn't write off Hannibal Barker and Pisba deal. I think, I don't think he just, I don't think he just handled, just didn't handle the course, Epsom. Well, that's it. You know, you, people go on Epsom form and then, yeah. So, yeah, good points are made. I'm going to end the show there. We've had a fantastic debate on our selections and our views on the Irish Derby, which I hope you will take on board. Uh, we're back on Sunday with myself, Lorne Malvo and John. And that's all from me, John and Andy. Bye for now.